It's often the case that the process of accomplishing something is difficult. We have this idea of desired result of who we want to become or the things we want to accomplish, whether that be in our personal life, our career, and from where we're at to where we want to go and who we want to become or what we want to accomplish, the distance be between the two is a process. And it's oftentimes it's difficult. Parents have an idea or a goal of having polite, well-mannered children, and then they're staring at maybe some uncivilized tornadoes at the time. And parents know that this is a process to get there of constant reminders, discipline, corrections. And the athlete knows that you don't just become a great athlete. It's not as if it happens with a snap of the finger and all of a sudden I'm a great baseball player. No, it's a process. It's hours in the cage. It's filming your swing and watching the tape. It's taking hours of ground balls. It's doing these seemingly silly things of footwork drills or mundane hand-eye coordination drills. It's a process. And undoubtedly, without exception, there always comes a time in the process where doubt creeps in. Do I have it in me? Is it worth it? Can I keep going? And in these times, especially, it's important to lean in and embrace the process. We've been talking now over the course of the number of weeks here since Lent began is the aim, the goal for us is to go deeper. It's union with Christ. It's the end goal of the Christian life is to be one with God. And as we know, that's a high aim and it's, it doesn't just happen with a snap of the finger, but rather it's a process over one's entire life is to go deeper and to become one with God. And that process needs to be continually embraced because there's a strong pull to disengage from that process. We talked about the, the importance of silence. If we have not yet experienced a pull away from silence, a pull away from prayer since maybe we began this first thought of, hey, I'm gonna go deeper, I'm gonna take this time for prayer or silence. If we haven't experienced a pull away from silence yet, then you're unique because the pull is strong away from silence. And it's always the case when we talk about going deeper, the process of, of going deeper, it's, it's always tightly connected with one's state in life, our vocation. Well, whatever that is, priesthood or marriage, if we're a student, if we're single, the process of going deep is tightly connected to our state in life. And with that, the daily grind of the process it's hard, it's difficult. And so there's also a pull away to disengage from the process of our state in life, which is why we need to embrace the process. From our readings this weekend, we learned two things that will help us to stay engaged and embrace the process moving forward, to go deeper. That is, we learn that the process always contains a Gethsemane moment. Always. And the process must include death. First, the process always contains a Gethsemane moment. We begin our readings this weekend of Jesus begins to get agitated of what's coming ahead. Jesus begins to be agitated and troubled of his upcoming death. We hear in verse 27 today, it says, he makes this statement to his disciples. He says, I am troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. So again, up into this point, we're in the 12th chapter of John right now. Before this, every time over and over and over again, it's my hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet arrived. It's not yet time. Today, verse 27, we hear in our gospel, the hour has come. And so he, he asked, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. And Jesus answers himself almost right away. And he says, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. So Jesus, who had his aim, his goal, the, re the whole purpose and why he came 
was for his hour, his hour being the passion, death, and resurrection. That's why he came. So right away, he answers himself and says, no, like, like that would be silly. I'm not going to ask for my hour to pass. Like, it's why I came. But things get so bad. Things get so brutal for him that just hours after Jesus says, I'm not going to ask this hour to pass. I'm not going to... Hours later, he does ask that. We hear that in our second reading today, that Hebrews alludes to it. Next week when we come to Mass, we're going to read the Passion and we're going to see and hear Jesus' Gethsemane moment. Today we hear that Jesus says, He offered prayers and begged with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. The very thing Jesus said he wasn't going to do, and that is to ask to be saved from his hour, he did do because he was troubled so much. That's how bad it got. The pull for Jesus to disengage from the process was really strong. And Jesus had that point of trouble. It's no different for us. The process for us, as we talk about that daily grind of being hard to prayer, as we start off and saying, hey, I learned this process of praying, of silence, A-R-R-R. Father Dindo's encouraging us last week to take time and visit the Blessed Sacrament and have time of adoration. And we do that, maybe prayer's dry. I don't get it. It's not working, maybe. Or not only that, maybe since I've made the determination to go deeper, I want to go deeper, I know I need to go deeper, since doing that over the course of the last four or five weeks, things in my life have gotten worse. There's maybe been more confusion. Things have been more difficult. Things have gotten harder. It's the more temptation to throw in the towel. And the process of going deep, we said, is so closely connected to our state in life, our vocation, Certainly, there's times of Gethsemane moments within our vocation. It was just Wednesday morning, waking up at 4.30, walking over here with Alex. 4.30 in the morning, that is, not in the afternoon. 4.30 in the morning, I remember walking over here, walking over here for the 5 o'clock workout. I remember there was, a, there was three things just on my plate that was just weighing heavy on my heart. Things that as soon as you wake up in the morning, you know, you think of, and it kind of just presses on you a little bit had those things, I turned to Alex walking on over here and I just turned to him and said, I think I'm done. He says, what? I think I'm done. I kind of just told him those things, just weighing on me, don't worry, I'm not leaving the priesthood. <laughs> but it's hard. The daily grind is hard. It's no different for you. You make a meal, kids sit down, finally get them to sit down, and then they don't eat the food. And then they get up and they run around. And you get to the point where it's like, I, I think I'm done. I'm tired. I think I, I, think I want to throw the towel in. Jesus got to that point. Jesus got to the throwing in the towel point where he says, I'm done. Even though he said he wasn't going to get to that point, he got to that point. But he didn't. He embraced the process. He embraced the process and embracing the process, he reached his aim, he reached the goal, the thing of which, why he came, going to the cross. Jesus met his Gethsemane moment with faithfulness. Jesus met his Gethsemane moment with love. The question for you and me is this, how do we meet our Gethsemane moments? How do we react in the face of our Gethsemane moments when they come, and they do come? I was talking with a mom a couple days ago about this, and she says, Father Mark, I feel like I've been, a, she's a mom of a couple small kids, and she says, Father Mark, I feel like I've been in a Gethsemane moment the last year and a half. I was talking to another young man who's engaged to get married. He's working two jobs. Over the course, within the span of two weeks, he got let go of both those jobs. And he said, Father Mark, I'm just trying to keep hope right now. I know what you're talking about with Gethsemane moments. I'm trying to just to keep hope. What do we do? How do we respond to Gethsemane moments? And here's the thing. Here's what we can do. Here's an option. We can throw the towel in. We can say we're done. We can roll over and leave and exit. 
that's a possibility. But what good does that do? Does that make anything better? People do leave marriages, leave the priesthood. It's an option. And it's exactly what the world encourages us to do. When things get hard, choose easy, choose pleasure, go a different way, change direction. Over and over and over again, relentlessly, it's the message in, the world in which the world tells us to do. What did Jesus do? He didn't shy away from it. He didn't shy away from his Gethsemane moment. He didn't minimize it. He saw it all and he cried out to the spot of deeply troubled, to the point of tears and shouting out, saying, I don't want to keep going. And he accepted it all. And if Jesus acknowledged he was troubled, not just any troubled, but a Gethsemane moment type of trouble, then he stayed in it. He stayed in the hard. We should expect no difference. And we should make the same move of, of, stay, of staying and embracing the process the way he did. Secondly, the process must include death. The process must include death. Jesus says here in verse 24, he's, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And look at the fruit that it produced. Look at the fruit that it pr produced of Jesus submitting his will, of dying. It brought about salvation redeemed the human race. And if we stay and embrace the process, we stay within the Gethsemane moments, we stay in the hard, we don't flee, if we stay in the trouble, we transcend suffering. Jesus transcends suffering. When we do that and we stay in Gethsemane moments and we die, we transcend suffering. What that does, it changes the game for everyone else around us when we transcend suffering. It's as if we, can, we put people on our backs. People who are starving, the world's starving to see this. A people that don't exit the process. That disengage. Of witnesses and models that stay engaged and embrace the process of going deep within the prayer and not leaving the vocation. Gethsemane moments and death are two things the world says to run away from. Whoever loses his life, or whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. The world says love your life. Pick easy, pick pleasure. When things get tough, run, change directions. Maybe just a quick word for the youth here this morning. Do not fall victim. Do not fall victim to the lie of this world. Give your life away. Surrender your life to him. And see that the fruit that it will produce. Don't squander your youth. And listening to the world and saying, it's me, it's about me seeking pleasure, but rather give your life away. The process of going deeper contains Gethsemane moments. It always does. It must include death. Let us not run from our Gethsemane moments. Let us not flee from death, but to stay engaged, to stay with Jesus and embrace the process.